Hello friends, I hope that you've been well. Today's video is kindly sponsored by Zenpop, who recently sent me their current stationery box. The March box's theme is Showa Nostalgia, which is an era in Japan from the years 1926 through 1989. For more information on the specific items in the box, you can scan this QR code that'll provide you with more details. Zenpop is based in Osaka, Japan, and they offer subscription boxes for stationery, sweets, and ramen. If you saw my live stream last month, you would have seen that I did an unboxing of the previous stationery box, and I also got their sweets slash snack box as well. I had so much fun testing out the pens while I drew your requests live, and I also really enjoyed all of the snacks that came in the box. They were so delicious. You can purchase a one-off box as a gift, or Zenpop also offers three, six, and 12-month subscription plans as well. Each month is totally unique, and they all come directly from Japan. I think that these would make for a great gift to a loved one, or even just as a nice little treat for yourself if you love trying out new stationery and or new Japanese snacks. So if you're interested, use my discount code I'm a wonder 5 for $5 off your purchase. I'll also provide a link in the description as well. I really find that Japanese stationery is always so well designed and the items in this box were no exception. I especially loved that the seam had a retro vibe with a lot of watercolor illustrations in the designs and so I thought it would be fun to create an illustration that not only incorporated some of the stationery into the piece but also have a retro aesthetic to fit the theme. I'm sure it will come as no surprise to many of you who are familiar with me and my channel that much of my art inspiration in my youth and teenage years came from anime and manga. I would say that generally my current art style definitely still has an anime influence, but I think that it does in a much less overt way. I continue to describe my art style to be somewhere in between stylized and realism. However, I thought that for today's illustration, it would be fun to go back and revisit that classic retro shoujo art style that definitely features those giant sparkly eyes, which I had the most fun drawing in this illustration. So I went ahead and did the sketch using my favorite red erasable pencil, followed by an oil-based colored pencil to finalize the sketch so that it would stay in place once I started painting. As always, all of the art supplies I use will be listed in the description down below. I decided to go with watercolors for this piece because to me, when I look at various illustrations of the retro shoujo art style, there is something very soft and airy looking about it. I think it's definitely possible that some of these pieces I was looking at were actually done using watercolors, but I'm sure many were created with alcohol markers as well, since I think that tends to be the kind of classic go-to art supply for manga and anime. Lastly, another reason why I decided to go with watercolors for today's piece is because, as my patrons will know, I recently received a whole bunch of new liquid watercolors from Pebio, and so of course I was very excited to continue trying them out. Again, my patrons will have already seen me using them. I did a live stream with them where I swatched all of these watercolors with them and I did like a test illustration as well and I was really impressed by how vibrant they were and I thought that it'd be perfect for this um, illustration that I'm working on. So I definitely plan to do a dedicated video reviewing them soon so look out for that in the near future.
Prior to working on the sketches for this page, I looked at a bunch of various shoujo illustrations for inspiration and, of course, the big sparkly eyes and dramatic eyelashes are a staple of this style. And another thing about it is that typically there is very minimal shading slash rendering. Everything is quite soft and all of the details generally come from the accessories, flowers, or other decorative elements. Because don't get me wrong, even though there are not a lot of rendering, rendering elements about this style, it's still very extravagant in other ways. So as you can see from the footage here, for the most part, I am mainly using flat washes with very subtle shading and highlights here and there for certain parts. As for the composition of the page, instead of going for that classic shoujo kind of manga cover type piece where, uh, like I just said, it's very extravagant and adorned with lots of decorative elements, I opted to draw inspiration from Japanese stationery packaging and because I wanted to do some collaging, the composition also feels a little bit reminiscent of like a magazine spread. And I think it kind of has that vibe because we have like a full body um, figure here and then we also have like a close up portrait. And then I chose to frame the portrait inspired by, yeah, like the stationery packaging as opposed to a more storytelling standpoint in the way that a manga cover would. As for the character I'm painting, some of you might recognize her since I have actually illustrated her a number of times and fe featured her in a few YouTube videos already. Her design originally came about because at the time I had been reading up about Sukeban, which was a subculture in the 70s of Japanese schoolgirl gangs, which I just thought was so badass and really fascinating. And so I was inspired to create a painting that was influenced by this movement, but of course I had my own spin on it. When I had initially created this character, I didn't go into it with the intention of ever really revisiting her or expanding on her in any way, since I had no plans to write a story or a comic or anything of the sort. Whenever I create original illustrations, usually I just go into it with the mindset of I want to create a cool looking character and that's it. However. This particular character, I just became so attached to her design that I began drawing her a couple of more times until eventually I finally decided that just because I wasn't planning on writing a comic about her didn't necessarily mean she couldn't be my own original character. Also just wanted to mention that in the footage here, I decided to opt uh, for a little bit of gouache for this red kind of framing around the portrait. So you can see this palette here. It actually just is a lot of old dried up regular gouache that I just haven't cleaned off yet. And so I just reactivated the red on the palette there and I'm using it for this painting. I believe the red gouache that was left on this palette is either Arteza or pot potentially Windsor and Newton. I don't really remember because it's been sitting on that palette for quite a while. And then of course I wanted to include the items from the box so I'm going ahead and using the washi tape. I absolutely love stamp motifs so I'm obsessed with this washi tape. And then I forgot to film the footage of this but I went ahead and actually used a glue stick from the previous stationery box from Zen Pop and I used one of the letter pads from the letter set to collage it onto the paper. And I also used the washi tape packaging sticker as part of the collage element as well. And then here I'm going in with the pen that came in the stationery box to do some of the line work on the illustration. I originally thought I was going to use this pen for all of the line art, but after I kind of initially did the first little line art on kind of her collar and her shirt there, 
I realized that black just felt a little bit too harsh. Uh, again, just if I'm kind of referring to the vibe and aesthetic that I was going for. So I felt like it was suitable to use the black pen for the eyes because obviously that is the key focal point of this type of, you know, art style. But then for the rest, I ended up going with colored pencil because I felt like it just made for a much softer look and then it really drew so much attention to the eyes as well. And so I'm using a various colors for the line art. I'm using like this like really dark burgundy for some of the warmer tones like her hair and her facial facial features and then i end up using like a navy blue for some of the blue or cool tone elements of the piece but yeah so backtracking to this original character of mine i after i made the decision that i wanted to officially make her an original character of mine. I made a post on Instagram a little while back asking my followers for some name suggestions for her since I feel like, you know, a, an original character isn't official until they have a name, right? So there were a ton of great options, but eventually I landed on Momo, which means peach in Japanese. I've always loved the duality of cute and fierce, which I think I've really tried to capture with this particular character since, you know, she's got the baby pink hair and just her overall color palette is very cute, but she is, you know, a leader of a girl gang and usually I have her illustrated, you know, wielding some kind of weapon and oftentimes she's kind of got like a sassy, sour face. And so I thought it was a really fun contrast to have this very adorable name, Momo, in combination with this feisty personality that I've given her. And so now that I have officially introduced Momo, I'm looking forward to drawing her more often. I'm thinking I definitely want to do some kind of character sheet for her to introduce her and also give her character design stats and maybe show off her personality traits like her likes and dislikes. I know for certain that I've decided she is an Aries <laughs> because of her feisty personality and I think that a trait of Aries is that they have good leadership and they're trailblazers so I think that really suits her personality. And the very first illustration that I did of her, I actually used for a draw this in your style challenge over on my Instagram page. And I've since done a few different draw this in your style illustrations. And I've had people asking me if I plan on doing another one. And I think that it would be really fun to do another art challenge based around Momo again. However, I think that it would be more interesting to do something slightly different from the standard, you know, create this, recreate this illustration challenge, but I haven't fully cemented exactly what that might be. Something that I have been thinking about is potentially a character design challenge where everyone draws their own bad bitch character to join Momo's gang. I think that would be really fun and it could really showcase everyone's creativity really well as opposed to just recreating one of my illustrations. So yeah, let me know in the comments if you like that idea for an art challenge. It would definitely be open to all types of characters. They wouldn't specifically have to be a schoolgirl. It could be any gender and you wouldn't have to be beholden to the Japanese school uniform necessarily. Anyways, once I finished with adding in the 
white highlights to the illustration with a paint marker and I did all of the line art with the colored pencils. I went ahead and finished off the piece with adding in a few stickers from the Zen Pop box onto her face and around her figure to really reinforce the collage type spread that I was going for. And with that, that brings us to the end of the video. Thank you again to Zen Pop for sponsoring today. And don't forget to use my discount code I'm a Wonder Five for five dollars off your purchase if you decide to pick up a subscription box yourself. And lastly, thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope that you enjoyed seeing me recreate this very retro shoujo art style, as well as officially introduce my original character Momo. Anyways, I hope that you have an amazing day or evening wherever you're at, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye!